Well, Republicans are celebrating a narrow special election victory in North Carolina's 9th Congressional District. Conservative State Senator Dan Bishop won over Marine Corps veteran Dan McCready. And as Boftam Yamim reports, President Trump was watching the race very closely. Republican Dan Bishop clinched the special election for a House seat in North Carolina, capturing a district the GOP has held for nearly six decades. Tonight is a victory shared by all who believe in the promise of America. Bishop is known by many as the state senator who wrote North Carolina's controversial bathroom bill requiring transgender people to use restrooms corresponding with their gender at birth. He defeated Democrat Dan McCready by just two percentage points after linking himself to President Trump, who stumped for him Monday night in Fayetteville. A congressman who always puts America first, Dan Bishop. President Trump was watching closely as the results came in from North Carolina and was quick to take credit for the victory. The president tweeted Tuesday evening that Bishop was down 17 points, but he then asked me for help. We changed his strategy together and he ran a great race. The special election was called after state officials voided last year's election because of vote tampering. As long as there are people who thrive off our division, there is still work to be done. McCready lost both races. It's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to be exhausted. I know I am. I'm running on fumes, y'all. <laughs> But it is not okay to give up. The race had been viewed as a referendum on the Trump administration, and the narrow Republican victory could signal a fierce fight for critical suburban districts in the 2020 presidential election. Both the Imam, CBS News, Washington. Joining me now, Anthony Salvanto, Leslie Sanchez, and Anton Seawright. Anthony is a CBS News Director of Elections and Surveys. Leslie is a CBS News contributor and a Republican strategist. Antoine is a CBSN political contributor and a senior advisor to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Whew, lots of titles going around the table here. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I want to start with you, though. What's really the big takeaway from last night? Well, look, like any special election, the one thing for sure is that people might overread it to mm. some degree. But to the extent we were watching this closely, that's why all of us sort of had bleary eyes because it was it was a little bit late. You know, this was another district that I see as sort of a continuation of 2018, another data point, mm -hmm. which is to say that Democrats did better than they had in 2016 in moving a district, even in this case, not quite all the way to a victory, but certainly off the marks that they set in 2016, where President Trump had won this district by double digits. Mm -hmm. So this race was, was much closer than that. And you know, I think what, what struck me about this particular one was that towards the city of Charlotte, which mm -hmm. is where this district is sort of centered, and then it spreads out into rural areas going, going out from there, the closer you got to Charlotte, the better the Democrat did. But then as you went further afield to mm -hmm. the rural areas, the better the Republican did. In fact, probably even better than expectations going in. And what that tells you is I think that is a divide, is a key divide to watch excuse me, as we head towards 2020, mm -hmm. you know, the president's very strong in rural areas. The Democrats will be stronger in cities, but that area in between, that, that urban-rural divide, is really pronounced right now in American politics. Well, Leslie, Anthony talks about that urban-rural divide, but this particular district has been reliably red, and they won by a slim majority. Should Republicans be concerned about that? Not for the reasons, for a few different reasons. One, they would say it's a special election, kind of all bets are off, some of the traditional trends don't play. But I think Republicans have a lot of reason to be concerned, not only for the reasons that Anthony laid out, but also the demographic shifts that are happening in states like North Carolina. North Carolina is really interesting because according to Gallup polling, like 41 percent are Democrat or kind mm -hmm. of lean to the left, 42 percent Republican lean to the right. There's only six states in the country that have a less than one percent margin in terms of partisan mm -hmm. divide. The rest are kind of open. What that says is as people are moving around into some of these suburban areas, as you get this mix of population and demographic shifts in population, it changes the way people vote. And you don't necessarily have the predictability that you had in past elections. So for short term, I always say in my business, it's great. You know, I only have to be right 51% of the time to be successful. <laughs> I'll take that. But long term, candidates like the Democrats are putting forward are the aggressive type for the future. They are building that back bench that I can't say Republicans are doing as well. You know, Antoine, you look at this, the Democrats outspent the Republicans, but they still lost in a larger margin than they did back in 2016. I mean, isn't that reason to sound, uh, excuse me, 2018, isn't that reason to sound the alarm bell? Absolutely not. Uh, this is a district 
and conventional wisdom would tell you we should not even be having a discussion about a Democrat has not carried the district since 1963. Romney won by 16, Trump by 12. Uh, you know, Dan Bishop is a notable state senator who has some deep relationships in Robert, Robertson County with the Lumbee tribe, which showed up uh, in the election in a big way last night. So conventional wisdom should not even be having this discussion. However, this is what happens when Democrats take the idea of competing everywhere we can win anywhere. And I think that was the big takeaway from this. Also, meaning you I, have to pick your districts a little bit no, more carefully. No, I think or? we have to compete everywhere so we can win oh, anywhere. See. Meaning we have to block and tackle. Meaning we have to run on offense and on defense. We have to protect and expand our majority, mm -hmm. and that means competing everywhere. But the big takeaway for us was I see campaigns as this, you either win or you learn. I think we learn to his point that we have some work to do in rural America if we want to win back elections in districts like this and I think that was a big takeaway for us. Anthony, when you look at the, the map on a larger scale, how significant is that divide, city and rural? Is that something the Democrats need to be concerned about as well? When we head into 2020, you'll hear a lot of people talk about swing districts and you'll hear a lot, a lot of people talk about suburbs. Both of those terms are too broad. Mm -hmm. What we're really going to talk about is in rural areas, whether the Democrats can move the needle back to, say, the mid 30 percent, lose, lose those areas, but get, lose them with 30 odd percent versus lose them with, say, a quarter, you know, 25 percent the way. And that's one of the reasons Hillary Clinton lost. Anthony Salvanto, Leslie Sanchez Thanks. and Antoine C. Wright, thanks so much for joining us.